Mr. Chairman, a lot has been said about the nuclear deal, but one thing is worth noting for today's hearing. The sanctions relief could amount to the largest infusion of cash to a State sponsor of terrorism in modern history. Iran will now, have more, will now have more cash to bankroll terrorist groups like Hezbollah, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, the Houthis in Yemen, Shiite militias in Iraq, and more. A known supporter of terrorism in the Middle East and around the world is quietly waiting to be handed a nice, neat cash dump. Close to $12 billion of your dollars are on the verge of being delivered to Iran, and it likely won't stop there, possibly just a quick stop before moving on to other terrorist groups. Let's welcome to the hard line, former terrorism finance analyst at the U.S. Treasury, now vice president of research at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, Dr. Jonathan Shanzer. Dr. Shanzer, thanks for being here. My pleasure. It comes to mind that when we're talking about all this money, we look at the deal. We see what Iran has been in the past. First question to me, at least, is who in the administration is being so lightheaded and naive, I guess, to not understand that when that money gets to Iran, it isn't exactly going to go to hospitals and to making sure that there's enough goat pens in the country? <laughs> well, uh, I think that there is probably a very clear-eyed view of this in the, in the uh, American administration right now. The White House understands that uh, there will be channels for terror finance that will be open. There will be more cash to disperse terrorist groups like Hezbollah and Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad and Houthis in Yemen and beyond. Uh, the problem is that we have really uh, narrowly defined the parameters of the ongoing nuclear negotiations to a very technical set of criteria. And Iran has figured out a way of making sure that they can hew to those lines while uh, they uh, can get off the hook when it comes to terror finance. And so the U.S. is not pushing them. They're not asking. And so it's going to happen. We're going to see a flood of money uh, go to these terror groups in the months to come. But if they then have figured it out, you've just told us about it, then likely somebody in the, in the administration, certainly up high, has figured it out. They know it as well. So it still comes down to the fact that we're talking billions of dollars here that are potentially going to wind up coming back to haunt America. Israel, other countries as well. Why can't we see that? Why can't we stop that from happening? Well, look, I, you know, I, I think that there, it's about will right now. Uh, you know, the, the goal was to stop Iran from enriching uranium at that dangerous level and, and making a dash to a bomb. And we understand that the Iranians were probably two months away from, uh, from breakout if they wished to make a bomb. That made American policymakers very nervous. And so they made the determination to only focus on the nuclear issue and not to focus on any of these other issues, which, of course, have been plaguing us for decades. You've got to remember that the Iranians uh, were designated as, spa as state sponsors of terrorism in the early 1980s. So this is something that we've been struggling with. Well, there for it quite is, Dr. Shanzer. That's a very good point. This has been going on for decades, and yet here we are right back to where we started. It almost as if we haven't learned anything. 2015, and we are still looking at sending billions of dollars to terrorist groups. Right. And actually, I would say that, you know, it, 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 apart from not learning anything, we're now actually rolling back on our own commitments to the safety of the people of the United States. The fact that in the, in the past that we've maintained these designations and we've not allowed funds to go through to Iran meant that we at least understood who we were dealing with. Now we have an administration that is recklessly handing over. It's actually not $12 billion. By the time it's all said and done, uh, when we release the money that has been held in escrow due to sanctions, it could be as high as $120 billion or more. That is a huge sum of money that the Iranians uh, stand to inherit, and that will go to radical causes. This is, of course, the most dangerous state sponsor of terrorism in the world. What would be your idea that about the minute and a half or so that we have left, when we're talking $120 billion, whatever amount of money that we're talking here, where do you think it will be funneled first? There are those who believe that already some of the money is going to Hamas to rebuild some of the terror tunnels, but I have to believe that if you're the Iranians, you already pretty much have your accounting all set as to who's going to get what to help the effort. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know exactly how they would prioritize. I think some of it will certainly go to the Assad regime. The Iranians are uh, are keen to prop up this uh, proxy of theirs. Assad has long been a very handy tool for the Iranians to transfer funds and, and weapons to other terrorist groups in the region, and it is, inc it is incredibly important for Assad to survive from their perspective. I think the Houthis have been uh, a great thorn in the side to the Saudis, and so the Iranians like that. They want to keep that going. And then, of course, the Iranians continue to target Israel. They would like to make life as painful as possible for the Israelis. Uh, and so I would suspect to see that, uh, that we would see more weapons going into the hands of Hezbollah, Hamas, 
Palestinian Islamic Jihad, and then don't forget also that Iranian militias are slowly but surely taking over the country of Iraq, and so they're going to be investing in those militias as well. I only have about 20 seconds left. Is there any way to stop this, or have we already gone past that point of no return? It is now in the hands of Congress. If Congress wants to stop this deal or to put greater uh, controls on this deal, they still have an opportunity, but that opportunity is quickly slipping away. And that opportunity is slipping away in days. We're not talking about years anymore. We're talking about days for this to happen, and then days perhaps for that terrorism to come back to American shores. Dr. Jonathan Chanzer, thanks so much for bringing this to light. I'm sure we're going to talk again. My pleasure. All right. It is something that we have to worry about, especially when you consider his number, $120 billion, perhaps going to terror. The Hard Line continues.